What is up, guys? Welcome to Diggity, a video game podcast, episode number 100. One, zero, zero, 10 times 10. Two boobies and a stick. Episode <laughs> 100. We're doing it here <laughs> right now. <laughs> it's a hell of a milestone. I'm super pumped. I'm super excited about this. And as always with me, the incredible ruler of Florida. Too soon. Ooh. Well, it's just Brody Fultz. Ooh. Real I talk. I don't know. Let, let, I, uh, I'm going to um, be really honest. I don't think I. Crazy. <laughs> I don't think I want Florida. You can have yeah. Florida. Well, here's the problem with Florida is you have to go against Florida man. Who's uh, a formidable foe easily. I mean, the man simply cares of nothing. Lives in Waffle House, <laughs> in the roof of a Waffle House, and because you know, dude, the the stories that come out of Florida are just insane. And oh uh, yeah, hey, you know what? Fun fact about Florida and why you have crazy stories like that. There's a state law demanding that the public must know about all arrests. So the journalists, like the the newspapers, have to report on that stuff. So that stuff probably happens in Indiana. Oh, I'm sure it, it does. Just, it, oh, I'm sure. Indiana I mean, minus the well gators alive. and stuff, but <laughs> I saw something about meth. And we have IHOP around here, not Waffle House. Damn it. <laughs> That's true. Well, we have Waffle Houses a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, there's a be. few of them, but they're not, not popular like around the here. the South where it's like no. every block, there's a Waffle House. Um, we have a lot of churches in, in our <laughs> main city. They have a lot of Waffle Houses. <laughs> <laughs> Both a religion. Absolutely. Um, I, I saw a story, dude, about meth gators, and it just simply was like something county sheriff, please stop flushing your meth down the toilet. We now have meth gators. <laughs> and I just I just was beside myself and I'm like, wow, this is a thing. It, so the, the crazy things always either happen in Florida or Russia. And if somebody got shot and or stabbed, it was probably in Brazil. Florida That's usually how it goes. It's a southern slash Cajun version, light Cajun version of Russia. Yeah. Okay. It's Russia. Like it. It's Russia with a Tommy Bahama shirt. <laughs> <laughs> real real talk though. Um, this hurricane that's coming, dude. I mean, have you seen this stuff? Oh, it's nuts. They're saying it could be a category four now. Oh my gosh. I yeah. mean, that's and it's gonna just engulf the entire state for a couple of days. So we have, we have listeners in Florida. Um, stay safe. Uh, don't be a fool. Probably leave your state. I mean, it is always go, better off. Go somewhere else. Safe and sorry. I think I've I've been in a hurricane once when I was in Florida when I was a kid, <clears throat> vacationing um, with my with my family. And I mean, it was it wasn't a big one like this one, but I mean, it was it still sucked. It was pretty pretty frightening. So I mean, for I the people who are like, so. yeah, I'm just going to board my windows up with uh, plywood and sit inside <laughs> eating fucking. <laughs> I almost said Tim Tams, but those are Tim Australian <laughs> slash like European. Um, we had Tim Tams back at home, but yeah, I mean, stay safe, guys. Um, you know what? Maybe listen to Diggity through the storm. Yeah, you start can hunker down one, and start at episode one. Oh, don't start at episode one. Start at episode Throw twenty up, and then work your way up <laughs> to delicious, beautiful ear food for your ear holes. Had to had to had to throw it in there. Um, subscribe to our <laughs> YouTube channel, guys. Uh, search for Diggity. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Diggity Podcast. Uh, if you're listening to the audio version for the first time, hey, why not hit that subscribe or follow button, depending upon what platform you're on? Whether you're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Deezer, or TuneIn, it does not matter. We are on that platform, Baroski. And I don't know if we're on Pandora yet. I never got an email, nor have I really checked the email. So. <laughs> I have not seen anything come across. So. Okay, well, we're not on Pandora yet. Not on Whatever. Pandora yet. <laughs> Anyways, it's the Friday show. Let's move on with video game stuff. Brody, what do we have for Diggity Deals? All right, so on Nintendo Switch, you can get Trials Rising Standard Edition for $12.49 on the US <laughs> eShop. On Xbox, you can get Red Dead Redemption 2 for $24.99 with free shipping from gamefly yes gamefly is still around holy uh, crap i know it's crazy they they have pretty good deals on physical copies too uh, on a pretty regular basis on playstation 4 you can get a physical copy of wreck fest for 33.99 
through Amazon. And for PC, Dirt Rally is free on Humble Bundle when you subscribe to the Humble Bundle newsletter. Uh, this will be valid uh, up until Sunday in this early morning Sunday sometime. So definitely check that out. Uh, good stuff. And we actually, Wreckfest was one that we've been talking about possibly picking up, maybe, question mark? Yeah, maybe. Maybe? Dude, I just looked up Gamefly. Uh, $9.50 per month for three months. Uh, and then fifteen ninety five per month after. And you can get one game or movie out at a time. Yeah. I know some people that used to use it back in the day. They loved it. I mean, it's just not that bad. It's not terrible. I it's mean, just the website looks kind of outdated. Well, that's because the service is kind of outdated. This is true. I didn't know Netflix <laughs> incorporated in 1997. When do you think... We are going to get a service more like um, uh, where you can rent games digitally because you can rent movies digitally. Oh, through like voodoo and stuff like that. So when do, you, when do you think we're going to get one for video games? Because that would be uh, awesome. Upcoming console. That'd be cool. I really do. I think so. I, I mean, want it. Yeah, I never I don't know why they don't do that. Can you rent a movie on your Xbox? Through the Microsoft Store, can you or can you only buy them? I've never bought a movie. Uh, through either. the Microsoft Store, I am not sure, but I know we use like Voodoo and stuff on yeah, our, yeah. on our smart iTunes. TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For like three days or whatever, right? <clears throat> for a couple bucks, yeah. That'd huh. be awesome. They a super good idea. Yeah, I mean, damn, digitally it doesn't really cost them much. So, I mean, no, just I running mean, the server using side, your internet to download and everything. Wow, damn, cool. Uh, speaking. Of uh, more games. This is a video games podcast. Uh, Xbox Games <laughs> with Gold for September um, was released um, in terms of the info of what we're getting. Uh, so for Xbox One, the Xbox One games are Hitman, the complete first season. And that's going to be available all month, which is kind of strange because usually one's available like at the start of the month and then one's available at the, towards the middle of the month to the end of it. Um, and then the other Xbox One game is going to be We Were Here. And that's going to be available September 16th to October 15th. Um, in terms of backwards compatible games that are going to be available for free for gold members, you can have Earth Defense Force 2025, which will be available to you for uh, sorry from September 1st to September 15th, and Tekken Tag Tournament 2 from September 16th to September 30th. So, that's uh, uh, that's up? normal. That's how they do it. The all month uh, is it one all month? Yeah, the one Xbox is- One games go for. Uh, a full month, and then the second one comes in huh. halfway through the month and runs halfway through the next month. I haven't paid attention to that one. Um, yeah, they overlap a little bit. But, yeah, uh, uh, Hitman is about the only one I'm really looking forward to. I know yeah. a lot of people talk pretty highly of Earth Defense Force, but uh, I don't, I don't know. know. play a 360 game. Yeah. Really I always pick them up, but no, I don't who doesn't play pick them. all these up, yeah. Uh, I mean, you might free. as well. I mean, but, the price yeah. is right. I'm not too stoked about this yeah. one but on the other hand on playstation no. playstation plus free games for september are batman arkham knight Ooh. and darksiders 3 so okay. that's that's not too shabby that's uh, really good dude. i want to play darksiders 3 so i'm glad it's on here and i will play it on playstation <laughs> <laughs> it's free but no playstation did that thing not too long ago where they we're talking about, you know, getting rid of the Vita games and all the other stuff that they did. Right. Um, and so they said, you know, they're going to make up for it in the quality of the games that they give for PlayStation 4. And this might be the first month that we really see kind of two. By AAA. God, they did it. They may have done it. By God. Um, all right. On to the news. Uh, Forza Horizon 4 has hit over 12 million global players. Uh, this is the fast-selling entry and ultimately the most successful game in the series. Uh, Forza, or Forza, as Brody says, because that's the proper way to say it. Horizon <laughs> 4 uh, brought in 2 million players in the first week of its launch and reached over 7 million players before the end of 2018. The year-old game is still seeing 4 million monthly users on average. Um, it's a hell of a game, dude. It's a I'm really like, good game. It's great. I'm excited to see what the next installment looks like on the next consoles because I don't know if they can really get prettier. I, I mean, really don't. Yeah, I don't know where they go from here. And side note there, uh, 
I say Forza right, but I mess up so many other names. <laughs> it's okay. It's all it counts. <laughs> but I it's got Forza. But yeah, this one's fantastic. I think I did like the setting of Horizon 3 a little bit better, the Australia. I thought that was kind of cool, and they did a lot of, of uh, different things there, whereas this one kind of feels more of the same throughout it, but slightly different, I guess. Right. Um, but no, this is an incredible game. Forza, these, these games are just astronomical, and... The fact that like you got a new Need for Speed coming out this year, and I just it, it can't even compete with the, the Forza game from last year. I don't even think it could compete with Forza Horizon Three, honestly. No, Horizon Two is really good, also. It was really. I good. actually liked Horizon 3's map better than Horizon Four, but I enjoyed yeah. the way that Horizon Four's menus and and the play yeah. of yeah. actual Horizon Four better. You just want to be able to floss standing beside your car after you win a race. Oh my god! I do what hate I, that feature. What I what I want to be. Able <laughs> I want to, to do turn is it off. I want it to be in America. Yeah. Yeah, I um, maybe, fella. I don't I know. Really They're probably going to throw us in Japan now. We've been through the tight streets. That would be okay. I'd Britain. be okay with Japan, like a street to Tokyo or something That'd like that. That'd be cool. It'd be cool. Um, I don't know. I don't know where they're going to go next. Iceland. There you go. <laughs> I mean, no, Iceland's the one that's green. Greenland's the one that has ice. Yes. Greenland, which will be part of the United States soon. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> uh, ID at Xbox has launched a new YouTube channel. Uh, this YouTube channel is solely devoted to promoting independent games that are coming to Xbox One and PC. So this is pretty cool. They basically took our idea of Indie Radar and blew it up on a larger <laughs> scale. <laughs> uh, no, this is cool. Thanks, it's, Chris Charlo. I, I'm all about, you know, promoting indie games and for the large companies to start getting involved in that, which yeah, yeah. ID at Xbox has always done it, obviously. But having the YouTube channel and hopefully that gets all the more attention for these guys. I mean, they work just as hard as, you know, the triple A guys. And, and it's good to see them get recognition, probably harder in some cases. Dude, and the ID at Xbox team is actually a fairly small team. Right. And um, Chris Charla, who runs it, incredibly mm -hmm. nice guy really fucking cool into skateboarding skateboards on the regular around microsoft campus all this shit really neat guy to meet super 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 nice guy and he i mean his team's awesome too also fun fact they like rebranded id at xbox like it's mm -hmm. got a new look to it new logo and everything totally kicks ass yeah looks it looks awesome. great it looks, it looks fantastic. fantastic yeah I'm, I'm super stoked for that um all right on to the news or can more news uh blizzard more entertainment is suing a uh a mobile game developer so um, is it Sina Games or Sina? What are we going to use? Sina? For? I'd Sina. say Sina. I don't know. You shouldn't trust my pronunciation. Well, we're going to go for it. Uh, Sina Games is in hot water uh, over the mobile game Glorious Saga of Glorious World. Oh, in the US. That was supposed to be or. <laughs> I don't approve. Glorious that. Saga or Glorious <laughs> World, sorry, in the US, which is pretty much entirely based on Warcraft assets. Um, Blizzard is asking for the infringement to cease uh, as well as 150000 per infringed work. Um, plus uh, attorney's fees and pretty much anything else that they can think of in the meantime. Every monster, creature, animal, and vehicle in the infringing game was copied from the Warcraft games. The suit uh, alleges weapons, amulets, and other objects were taken straight from the Warcraft games without pretense. Audio cues and sound effects from the Warcraft games were reproduced for the infringing game as well. Um, good luck to these guys. Yeah. Uh, they're... they're um... What's what am I trying to think of? The the icon that they have for their game is identical, but a is cartoony it really? style. It is almost identical to some uh some Warcraft stuff. Oh, it, is. it is it is a blatant ripoff, not even trying to hide it. And these guys have done it before. If you look at some of their other games, they rip off other series as well. Oh my not, god, it is too. It is identical. I mean, they aren't even trying to hide it. Um, yeah. They are so Cena is like a subsidiary of a large uh, Chinese company, uh, which was like Cena something or another. Um, but yeah, this is this is uh, probably not going to go well. Well, I, I imagine. Well, you could for say Cena. that but the problem is it's a Chinese company. Yeah, that's and generally mm, speaking, they don't really give a shit. No, I mean, not at brutal. all, actually. Not even a little bit. Could just go into the the, uh, the app store on Google Play, and it is just yeah. awful how many 
Chinese knockoffs and things there are on there. It's just right, really right. ridiculous. But Ugh. yeah, this one might be messy. <laughs> Good luck to them. <laughs> uh, so we have a ton of Shovel Knight news. Uh, so Yacht Club Games uh, did kind of like a Nintendo Direct-esque type stream uh, a couple days ago. Uh, so Shovel Knight Showdown is one of the things they announced, which is a Smash Bros. style fighting game featuring the cast of Shovel Knight. Uh, this is part of a free update to existing owners of Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. Uh, will be available as a standalone game on Switch, PS4, and PC, and will not be coming to the 3DS and PS Vita versions oh. of Shovel Knight. Uh, so Shovel Knight King of Cards is the final expansion for Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. Nice. Uh, this is the other part of the free update to existing owners of Shovel Knight Treasure Trove and will be available as a standalone game for Switch, PS4, and PC. Uh, Shovel Knight Dig is another thing that they announced. Uh, this is kind of like a Dig Dug style adventure uh, starring good old boy Shovel Knight. Uh, it is made in partnership with Nitrome. Whoa, and I haven't heard that name in a while. I know. It's great. They did uh, last year. They released a game on the Switch called Chicken Bomb. I have it on my Switch. Huh. Uh, yeah, they, they're still doing stuff. They mainly kind of hover around the mobile market. But uh, cool. yeah. That's kind great. of venturing over. Uh, and the devs say this one's pretty pretty far out yet, but they are they just kind of wanted to show it off and uh, get it out there. And then there are new Shovel Knight amiibos coming. So Boom Tech Plague Knight, Licked Lord, <laughs> uh, Spectre Knight, Ultimate Supreme Knight, King Knight, sorry. Uh, these amiibos unlock new costumes for Shovel Knight Treasure Trove and Treasure Knight Showdown. Uh, each amiibo also unlocks a fairy friend to follow you throughout the game. Uh, all of this news has no specific release date at all whatsoever. They just are kind of putting it out there. Uh, we do know that uh, the King of Cards expansion should be coming fairly soon, though, uh, which I imagine is going to bring Showdown with it the way that it was kind of worded. Uh, oh. So those should be coming, I believe, fall question mark of 2019 but we'll we'll see huh dude it's it's i mean yacht club games really has a gem on their hands man oh, they're just, it's crazy it's it, they make a fantastic game too like mm -hmm. if you've never played shovel knight you absolutely Get should check it out it. it's so good absolutely. it's it's it, it feels like a classic platformer and just does it so well with all of the things that you would expect from a modern platform. It's just, I don't know how the hell they did it, but they did it. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's good when Nintendo allows it to be in a game. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, Nintendo's putting it in everything. I mean, it's an assist trophy in super smash bros. Uh -huh. It's uh, what there was a fighting game not too long ago that it was in or shovel Knight was in. He's just all over the place. So this is cool. Very cool. Awesome. For these guys. Uh, well, uh, last episode, we discussed um, at a GameStop managers conference that they have every single year that there is a Disney classic leak uh, from an individual on Twitter stating that Aladdin and uh, Lion King would be part of this remaster pack. Um, and it's true. Aladdin and the Lion King are releasing in a combo pack in fall uh, 2019, and the games will be playable in full 1080p and will have new features and enhancements. Uh, it also features three versions of the game. So the Game Boy version, the SNES version, and the Sega Genesis version, which I think most people played it on Genesis. That's how I played it. Yeah. Um, and uh, in watch mode, will allow you to skip any part of the game or jump into a certain part of it. Um, museum mode gives you a behind-the-scenes look at the art and development of each game. Uh, the original trade show demo is also playable for the first time, which that's always awesome to see. Uh, in terms of visual enhancements, uh, it has screen filters and display options that you can choose from. Um, soundtracks, you can listen to classic tracks from the games. Uh, the game pack will be released for Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and Steam. Um, so cool to see this back. I'd love to see like DuckTales come back. Um, yeah. I know it came back, uh, you know, a while back, but I'd like to see it redone in a different way or just a classic be brought back. Um, I think that's a big licensing hell is the only yeah. reason they haven't well, gotten I'm, into that. I'm curious about that though, because they started that TV show up. 
on Disney XD and stuff like that. So maybe maybe they came to a. I think it was just a certain part of the game that made it difficult. It's not oh, really? so much the yeah, it's not the IP itself. But do you know like, what it was? What was the... I can't remember. I I actually read something about it not too terribly long ago because it is now off of uh, stores or Ducktales the the game, so oh. you you can't actually purchase it digitally anymore uh i picked it up on the last day i could uh but yeah it's it's one of those things that there's some sort of weird licensing thing uh just due to the time it came out and i don't remember exactly what it was if it was music or or what but um yeah i imagine with the with the new series running and how popular the first game was i i wouldn't be surprised if they tried their hand at making a new ducktales game I think that would be a smart move, honestly. Yeah, I'd like to see, like, um, uh, there was a DuckTales game. There was a Scrooge McDuck game that was awesome. Um, There was also another Lion King game that wasn't the, like, the the Lion King. was some other one where you're, like, in a cart and stuff. Um, And there was a Darkwing Duck game that was awesome as well. So, I I don't know. I'd like to see them bring them back. I think they will. I mean, Disney has been pretty solid in bringing back old stuff now. I mean, considering Disney Plus, I think they'll get a little bit behind this a little bit more. Yeah, and we even talked, uh, I don't remember how long ago it was, but it was a while ago that Disney was kind of definitely getting more into the game sector. They're, again. They're actually, yeah. Again, yeah, they're, they're going to try their hand at it again. So uh, give me a Disney kart racer. Let's let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I think if they That'd just awesome. try to keep to normal game modes and game genres yeah. instead of creating like toys for games and going into this crazy elaborate stuff where there's all these webs that connect to each other. I think they'll do a good job. They have strong IP. I mean, yeah. you imagine, yeah, like you said, a Mickey mouse cart racer that was like on the level of a crash bandicoot be insane. Yeah. Uh, it will never be as good as Garfield cart racer though. No, never, never. never. Can't Garfield. touch it. In Garfield, we trust. <laughs> Uh, so Telltale Games is being revived. Uh, mm. Not too terribly long ago, this company went down. Uh, I think it was about a year ago or so. Yeah, uh, a couple, I, not even a year ago. Uh, not it was quite. A yeah, months yeah. into our podcast or whatever. Yeah, it was like fallish winter of twenty nine mm-hmm. or twenty eighteen. Sorry, uh, but the assets from Telltale Games have been purchased by a company called LCG Entertainment. Uh, LCG plans to sell some of the backlog and work on new games and potentially potentially new licenses uh jamie oddly and brian waddle sorry if i absolutely butchered your names uh are heading up the freshly revived telltale and will be offering employees of their original telltale freelance roles with a set amount of full-time positions possible in the near future uh neither jamie nor brian previously worked at telltale but jamie worked with licensed mobile games and brian ran marketing for the havoc game engine uh, so far, the properties that have been confirmed as uh, confirmed as being owned by the new Telltale are uh, The Wolf Among Us, Batman, and a lot of the Telltale originals that they came up with. Uh, the Walking Dead IP is now owned by Skybound Games, and the Stranger Things IP is now back under Netflix, so those are no longer options for them. Uh, there are also plenty of IPs that are somewhere kind of in limbo. We don't know exactly what's going on with them uh with no official confirmation so uh some of those are the guardians of the galaxy minecraft tales of the borderlands game of thrones um it, those could really go either way uh but we have a quote from Otley here that says uh this is a viable business that went away due to market conditions and some scale choices uh telltale's previous management um uh-huh. I like games that tell stories and I think our industry should have a company that specializes in narrative driven games. Nope. I fully agree with you. Going to be here in a year. Uh, First of all, no market deserves something. A market wants something. Right. Uh, Second of all, this, this company. Yeah. I mean, part of it, yes, was scaling up, but another part of it was people got, tired of these games i mean they didn't want they would go do borderlands and then they didn't want to do the second installment of that they go to see the first batman and play through they didn't want the second installment of the batman they they go through the first iteration of the game they didn't want to follow the episodic um uh revenue stream um or business model that they had going and it just didn't work the ip that's held here too 
is incredibly wound up into royalties um like crazy uh i mean wb and all that with batman um yeah. you know game of thrones with hbo game of Th- nobody watched game of thrones anymore right it's over it's done i i imagine game of thrones is probably not going to make a return on this list here but no yeah i i, I, I think i agree with you i think the IP that they chose was way too expensive. Yeah, it's popular, but it's way too expensive. And a lot of times, like for me personally, I don't care for Telltale games because when I sit down to play a video game, I don't want to play an interactive why novel. They just like or a show. Make, or, why would they just make their own, like a Life is Strange style? Well, and they very well might. I, the only ones that have been confirmed so far are The Wolf Among Us and Batman, which. Well, because they probably still have the license for a couple years. Right, right. So you might as well use it at that point. But um, some of the other ones, I I highly doubt some of these are going to come back. Minecraft does kind of lend itself pretty well to this. Uh, My kids play one of the Minecraft type choose your adventure things on on Netflix. Sure. It's not for me. Again, I don't I don't care for this personally. It's not when I sit down to play a game. I want to play a game. I don't I don't do this interactive novel stuff. Um, or interactive TV shows or anything like that. It's just not for me. I just and don't think it's viable in this market anymore. I don't I, think anyone's really going to care. I think yeah. what might happen is they made a holding company. They're holding these assets underneath the holding company, this intellectual property. They're going to shell it out to Game Pass. They're going to shell it out to Sony's um, <clears throat> PlayStation Plus monthly shit. They'll make their revenue on it. They'll throw that out the window. They'll finish up the ones that are still there and they'll sell the fuck company. Because I don't know how the company stays alive. I don't get it. Yeah, we'll I don't see. understand this guy. One of the guys on here, oddly, um, is responsible for working on Duck Dynasty of, games yeah. and Power <laughs> Rangers games, which is fine. I mean, right. whatever. Um, one of these guys is also from Starbreeze, which we know how well that went. Uh-huh. Um, Chris Kinsley from Rebellion. Rebellion's a cool place. Heavy Iron Studios is great. I just don't, I don't get it. I don't know why you'd make this move. I think it's bonehead. And anytime someone says something deserves this and it's business, business, no one, a business doesn't deserve to be in business. business. (laughs) A business never deserves to be in business. A business performs to be in business. Uh, Generally, if you say a market deserves something, it's probably going to fail because that means the market doesn't want the product but you right. think that they deserve it. Yeah. You think so, that people yeah. are dumb and they don't know what they want. Nearly impossible to pull off. Right. In terms of product. Uh, yeah. Whatever. I'm with you. I, I fully think uh, in another year, we're probably going to be talking about telltale again. Um, what they do in the meantime, who knows? It might be a couple of years, I guess. Who knows? Hey. It might give them some time to, to put out a couple of games and realize that, Hey, this market really doesn't deserve this. Mm. Mm. Uh, anyway, I uh, played Control, and uh, I've got some first impressions. I have not played enough to give anything in depth here by any means. I, cool. I probably played like hour and a half, two hours, maybe, and some of mm. that was just kind of wandering sure. around looking at stuff. Uh, but this game is creepy. Um, it's not it scary in the... What's that? Nope for me. Yeah, no, probably not for you. Uh, okay. it's not it's not scary in the way of like jump scares or anything like that. There's just this very overhanging, ominous like. Like it feels like it's going to be a jump scare or something, but it never it comes. It feels like there's always yeah, exactly, exactly. Huh. It just, always feels like something's going to jump out that. of nowhere nope. and nope. S- nope. <laughs> and scare the hell out of you, and it never happens. But there's. <laughs> It, like as you're walking around through this place, there's like whispers and voices and stuff. And it's just, I don't know, man, it's creepy, but I'm going to finish it because <laughs> it's interesting. It is the, the way that the story is presented and the way that I have seen everything so far, it is really cool. I, I really, really do like it. I don't play scary games. I don't watch scary movies. It's not for me, except for it. I watched it. South side of Fort Wayne or south side of Chicago scary? Uh, this is probably like... Or or 
south side of Cincinnati? Ooh. Uh, we're going to go with south side of Fort Wayne because it's not it's not scary. It's just <laughs> it's just disturbing. <laughs> People are probably like, what the fuck is Fort I, Wayne? We can't compare that to anything. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, some of the cons that I've had with it so far, the map is not great. It is, mm. instead of having levels to the map, it's one map and there's multiple levels in this building. Uh, getting around is a little confusing. Uh, uh, the, the, it's, it, it's like a large office building type thing. And okay. so a lot of the areas look kind of similar and it's really easy to forget like, like, like they've used the same furniture in that area yeah kind of which i mean it makes sense I, right, it's not, right. i'm not calling it laziness it's just one of those things that it's off-putting as you're trying to traverse the map a little bit sure. and, and there's signs and stuff so you can make your way out and use the map a little bit but you also don't know like oh well if i head in this general direction it could very well be a dead end and now i have to backtrack and go downstairs in order to hit this actual you know room into the next room moving forward it's it's the map's not great by any means um mm. I ran into some setbacks with like weird distances between saves um, or like weird places that it saves. Uh, it seems like it only saves in like kind of like safe areas. Um, and so like I, I fought like a mini boss and beat the mini boss after losing to him a couple different times. And um, then I walked off of an edge and died and had to go back and redo it. And that's when I go, Nah, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done for tonight. Um, but because it was, I I hit a spot where there was like a. It, it does a lot of artistic things in the game where they're like trying to do just weird trippy stuff, and yeah. so it was doing one of those like little montages, and I was walking, and I walked right the fuck off of an edge and died. I was like, okay. Uh, some of my pros for it. It is visually a very good looking game. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on. Um, I am not playing it in 4K. I'm only playing it on the uh, the OG uh, Xbox One. Um, so, But even there, it looks great. There's a lot of really, really cool visuals going on. Uh, like I said, they, they're very artistic with how they present all of this. And it is a very, very trippy thing. Uh, the audio is very, very good as well. Um, they got a lot of cool sounds going on. A lot of them just there to scare the shit out of you. Uh, and also, like I said, those, those whispers and like shouts for help, but they're muffled and like all this crazy stuff's going on in the background, almost to the point where it's annoying and it's supposed to be that way. Um, it, it is specifically designed to be annoying. Like the, the main, uh, this isn't really a spoiler, but the main villain type enemies, I guess are called the hiss. And that's why they have this real annoying hissing sound. Name. Yeah, it's it's really, really uh, the audio is done in a way to really drive home the atmosphere. Uh, the story, like I said earlier, has been very, very good so far. I don't have any issues with it. I, I, I've I, also only played an hour and a half to two hours of it, so not a lot to go off of there. But uh, And then one thing that's kind of not really a con or a pro, uh, it's a little challenging. It, it can be a little tough. And the only reason that's kind of a con pro is because there's no difficulty settings. There's one difficulty all the way through, uh, which isn't really a hindrance, but it's something we haven't seen in, in most games. Uh, a lot of times there's usually a difficulty setting. Uh, so if you don't want at least a little bit of a challenge, I would definitely probably stay away from this because I imagine it gets harder from where I'm at now. And that, that first boss gave me more trouble than I expected. So, but wow. yeah, uh, definitely so far I'm really enjoying it. Like I said, last night I just had that weird save thing and it was time for me to go to sleep anyway. So I just went to oh, bed <laughs> playing what you've played so far, even, even if it be an hour and a half, two hours. I mean, generally speaking right now, what's your sentence? You'd say maybe pick this thing up or would you, would you um, wait up? So the only thing that kind of concerns me about recommending people uh, to pick this up is the fact that through. what's that? So you haven't put enough time into it. Well, uh, that and the fact that 
uh, it's not very long from what I understand. From what huh. I'm hearing, it's only about probably 12 hours long on the on the heavy side, I guess. Um, so I'm hearing everywhere from like 8 to 12 hours for this game. And it's, okay. uh, I paid 50 for it. I got it from Walmart, and I don't know if it was on sale or what. But I, How I, much did you pay for it? 50 50 dollars yeah whoa yeah whoa yeah so at that price point um for eight hours to 10 12 hours maybe it's hard to recommend that unless you really are into this kind of game creepy games because it's not a shock game <clears throat> no yeah it, it, so it, in your findings there's a lot of really cool things in it um the, the, like I said, the story's good. Everything's very, very good. I don't have a problem with the game. I think just in this day and age, when you pick up a game and it's you know $60 and you can get hundreds of hours out of it, uh, it's hard to justify $50 for a 12-hour game. Um, so I, I guess that's my thing. I, I would, if it goes on sale, I'd 100% pick it up. Like, it's really, really good. But, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's kind of hard to recommend at that price point, I think. Hmm. It, I, if, I didn't think it that much. It's crazy. It's, yeah. Uh, and like I said, I think it's actually like normally. Like 39.99 deals or, you know, 35.99 deals or something like that. Right. And I think it's actually normally $60, but Walmart's kind of <sighs> been doing this thing where they, some games are like 50 bucks <clears throat> instead of 60. I don't know what's yeah. going on there. I've seen it a few times now but well don't tell anyone hopefully it's just somebody fucking up at walmart yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you know yeah Sweet. i'll uh i'll probably finish this up and have a, a full review uh next week i would hope maybe sweet 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 oh. Um, well, all right, guys. Uh, today's podcast uh, took time and effort to create. If you want to become a patron, head on over to patreon.com slash podcast. We'd appreciate it. Uh, you can also support the podcast in a different way also by heading on over to audibletrial.com slash diggity and getting a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial of Audible, an audiobook service by Amazon. Um, I use it. It's awesome. It's cool. Um, I get to listen to books rather than read them because I generally do not have a lot of time in the week uh, between the podcast, between work and between life. Um, but uh, it's I mean, there's a ton of books on there. Constantly new ones coming on. Um, uh, there's notes that you can take within it. Uh, you can go back to parts that you felt were important during the time on it. And I mean, it's literally on pretty well any device you could think of um you can follow us on twitter and instagram at diggity podcast subscribe to our youtube channel search for diggity or digging to find us uh my gamer tag on xbox is maple jeff brody and mine is luscious brody and on playstation you can find me at wolverine's cousin <laughs> You did that pause on purpose. Uh, <laughs> I was guys, wondering if you're gonna make me do it or not. <laughs> I love the pause too because you're like, oh, you oh, oh. 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 <laughs> um, guys, leave us a review, it helps a ton. Whether it's a, a comment review on one of our videos on YouTube or if it's a review on our Apple Podcast page on Spotify or on Google Podcasts, whatever platform you listen to, uh, it does two things. One, uh, it helps us get noticed more on those platforms, it's generally how they work. Uh, off of uh, uh, engagement and two uh, it gives us feedback where we can make the show better each and every single time that we produce it uh, and until next time guys enjoy your long weekend those listeners that we have in florida stay safe uh, and stay smart and until next time guys we'll see you for the next wednesday show see ya pump shovel night directly into my veins <laughs>